Everyone, we have an announcement to make. So... What's going on, bro? Hey, what's happening, bro? How are you? Man, listen, listen. Uh, you know, I, I was gonna I, I was gonna go ahead and play the music and give you the intro and all this good stuff, man. But I was like, nah, nah, nah. I I, I wanna jump, <laughs> I, I wanna just jump right into I, I wanna jump right into you, man. I wanna jump okay. right into you. You was like, you came. Come on. You uh all right, so first thing first, let me uh let me introduce go ahead and introduce yourself, bro. Introduce yourself and let everybody know who you are. I'm Drill Sergeant, owner of DSX Trucking, uh three three combat veteran, and trucking is my shit. That's what I do. It's in my blood. Man, listen, listen. I I, I seen you. I was watching you on Jay Rich Live the other day. And okay. I was I was like, man, this this dude coming at this this female hard. Like, what the hell? What's what's going on? It don't matter. I, I it was, don't matter but when it's you female or male. But listen, but when you when you started breaking shit down though, when you start breaking mm -hmm. shit down, then that's when I was like, okay, okay. I, this bro right here. This this bruh bro right here is what's up, man. So you um how how long you been in the game, man? How long you been in the game? Thirty five years. Thirty five years. Uh, I got my. I started. In, I started. I started as a child. I got my license. They wasn't called CDLs when I got my license. They were articulated license mm -hmm. back in nineteen eighty two. So was those the same licenses that uh that was uh not CDL? I'm sorry. Uh, chauffeurs had too. It was yeah. chauffeurs they, license. They were called, they were called chauffeurs articulated. That means a combination vehicle. You had chauffeur one, chauffeur two, but they were called class A articulated. That means combination vehicles more than one. Oh, okay. And what they did was when the government took over, they grandfathered us in. We didn't have to take no tests and none of that goofy shit. Oh, they okay. just governed. They just grandfathered us right in. So before be, before the government took over, how was it? How was it for you to get your license back then? Easy. I mean, you just had to pass the damn. Uh, actually, the, I, I'm gonna say it was harder than it is now. Back then, you really had to know how to drive. Mm -hmm. They they didn't play no games. They didn't they didn't short show you alley docking, straight line backing, and then they would actually take you and drive you through city streets and then on the highways and back. You drove damn near for an hour on the road test. On the highway, city streets, and then back to the uh, motor vehicles. Okay. Well, I mean, they what well, don't they do that now? I mean, when no, I, I it's been a while. It's been a while, but it's a little watered down more. Like the the new people are new people versus those old dudes that used to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you didn't even approach the truck right, they would fail you. You wouldn't even get out the damn motor vehicles. Mm. They didn't. They didn't make you go through. You know, they would ask you, okay. Tell me what you're getting ready to do, and they will walk with you while you're talking, and you would literally tell them. Now they do more of a hands-on type that right. you can remember by looking at it. Right. Back then, you walked up to the truck, and he would start asking you questions. 
Oh, okay. Before you even get to the truck, like before you even get to the truck, they got a clipboard. He's asking, okay, so when you first get to the truck, tell me what you're gonna do. Oh, you okay. Know, and then you broke it down that way. So by the time you got to the truck, if you missed something, it was too late. Oh. At least now you get to look at it. Like when I take guys for their their uh, uh, road tests and everything, mm -hmm. I have to actually take the driver's manual and go through that shit myself to make sure that they don't miss nothing. <laughs> so when I went, when I went, at eight, I was eighteen when I got my license. I couldn't even cross state lines. But when I got my license, I remember you know everything my dad taught me. So it was nothing to me. So you, you uh, know, it, it, so you came from a yeah. family. You 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 came from a family. Of of, yes. of trucking. This is this is. I'm the third generation. My kids be the fourth. My my son, my two sons are the fourth generation. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, so we were, we were born into this shit. So so 35 years, man. Uh, what what? Talk 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 me through uh 35 years of trucking, man. What what have you what have you seen or not seen out here? Well, I've seen I've seen the industry change. Over the years, uh, you know, I was here when they went on strike in the 70s, okay, mm -hmm. across the world. When every truck pulled over, I was a little kid on the side of Route 80 out in uh, Indiana. I might have been Ohio when my dad pulled over. They they had a truck strike across the world. Mm -hmm. And they, they was out for 72 hours. They got their demands made. Wait, there was you an know, actual they, truck strike? A truck strike? was an actual strike. We actually yes. struck? Are you serious? Yes, they. I'm, you can go back and look it up. It was I, an actual I, strike across America. How come we can't get that shit now? Like, what the hell, man? Because they can't do it now because so many people are fucking pussies and they're self-contained. Uh, um, they're scared to go because they feel if they don't go to work, they're gonna lose their truck. They're gonna lose their house. If they're gonna, if you're gonna lose all that shit. That means you're behind in payments before this takes place. So mm. don't blame it on the strike because mm. the strike is going to make the president and Congress have to open their eyes and see. We can shut America down. Y'all talk, they, they doing this uh, protesting on a uh, killing. But if the truckers was involved in this protest on killings as well, guess what? America, the world will come to a complete halt. Mm. So you think the store you think the stores is empty because of the coronavirus pandemic? No, we're filling up warehouses every fucking day of the week, mm -hmm. and they just chose not to ship the shit to stores. We just stopped working, but we can't go on strike because we can't stick together because the new age kids that are coming out there don't understand what a strike is about. Okay. They don't know how to shut their truck down and say, you know what. We striking across America. Back in April of this year, we we tried to do a strike. Mm -hmm. you know, I think we got a thousand guys all together. We went to D.C. for the weekend. Only five hundred drivers showed up. Wait, you you was out there doing the the, the broker situation? Doing the broker situation? Yeah. Yes, I, I was there. I bobtail. I bobtail down to D.C. from Jersey. Okay, okay. So, in your opinion. And, and what well, you just said, it was only 500. So in your opinion, did that did that muster anything? I mean, some of the guys say yes, and some of the guys say no. And the I, president only gave you I guys give a, hats, you know. I give it a 50-50. It, it, it was heard. It was heard. But what they're going to do with it, they're going to pick and choose what they want to hear, and then they're going to make new laws to go against what they heard. Mm-hmm. See, this is their way of opening up for new technology. People like me, they can't wait for us to get out the industry or die. Mm -hmm. Because we keep America rolling. The new kids, this new age, this new technology, ELDs and these uh, uh, fuel efficiency trucks, they're not cutting it. These guys are starting at 6 in the morning. They're done at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. They're fucking overpacking the rest areas, the truck stops. It, this shit's crazy, bro. It, it, you're not working. No, no, hold, on no hold, hold on now. Hold on now. Okay. I, hell in the house. Hold on now. I, I'm one of them drivers that starts at 6 in the morning and finish by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, too. I, I be, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get. No, I'm trying to get to the truck stops before they get full, bro. 
we man, ain't nobody pulling no damn. You know when we pull in the truck stop, we pull in the truck stop to take a shit, shower, grab something to eat, and keep it moving. <laughs> That's it. Ain't nobody pulling in no. Ain't nobody pulling in no rest areas and no truck stop for no ten hours sleep. Who the hell sleeps? Who, who shuts down for ten hours? That's ten hours. It's what half a twenty-four damn year. Well, listen though, man. I mean, the companies that now now listen. It's it's not just the drivers, man. I mean, not it's well, it's not that. just it's the, the, way, it's the it's, companies. It's the, the way the way the companies is is running them now. You have no because choice but to remember, Oh, go ahead, go ahead. But that's the way that's the way the world changed. You asked me how did what did I see and how did it change? Mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. the change it made. Oh, okay. But without outlaws like without outlaws like myself and uh, a couple of hundred thousand others, we do jobs that you guys can't do. We get shit done that you guys will never be able to get done. Hmm. Why? Because you were programmed to run 10 hour days, 12 hour days, pull over, get sleep, read a book, take your shoes off, stand up in your little automatic truck. We would we wasn't taught that. We're taught to get the job done. So if I get a load and 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 the the, the company says, "Hey, Sarge, this load got to be in Jacksonville, man. We need it there by tomorrow." When we get there, that money's there waiting on us. We ain't sitting there waiting on no uh, uh, what they call these fucking people? Factoring companies and all that shit. The money waiting on us. Okay. We get the job done. We do shit these new age kids and guys and girls can't do. But it's not. It's but it's not their fault though, bro. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. But guess what? Even if they could do it, they can't do it because they're not built to do it. They wasn't trained to do it. I see guys. Let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. These guys, are, you got more accidents now than we ever had. Uh, yeah, okay, I agree Why? with you. I, I agree with you on that. Have, for one, they're not experienced. Two, when you're driving an automatic truck, you're just driving a big-ass fucking boring-ass car. Okay. Okay, so you're sitting in this comfortable-ass truck listening to your podcast or your music, and mm-hmm. you got these Son of bitches ride with headphones on, mm-hmm. don't know nothing about a CB radio, don't mm-hmm. know how to communicate with other truckers, mm-hmm. and they just sitting there, and then they go into what we call white line fever. They go into a trance, and now you're not seeing no, they done crossed over the lines, they done went off the road all upside down. These accidents that happen because they done got too comfortable and lackadaisical of the truck. Mm. If you're sitting there driving an automatic, you've got shit to do. You don't have nothing to do but just sit there and stare out the fucking window. Okay, so let me ask you this, bro. Let me ask you this. Now, unfortunately, it it's the way of the world now, and majority of these uh, dealers are are converting from manuals to 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 automatics. Wouldn't you? Thing. Wouldn't you suggest? Would wouldn't you think that they 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 try to make the truck? How can I say this? They they try to make the truck accessible for everybody, especially women. Well, this is what happened. This is what happened mm-hmm. back in um, when they started with the automatics in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. the automatics came in because there was a lot of we had hundreds of female drivers in the seventies and coming out of the sixties, seventies. Right. Okay, they ran teams with their husbands or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Then you have guys that were already uh, 70 years old, 60, 70 years old with bad knees. Right. Okay. Okay. So they made the automatic trucks. It was a special order for women and older gentlemen we call vets that drove. Okay. Okay. And then you got guys like my father, uh, my grandfather. They, yo, you still get... Right now, if you cut my left leg off, I can still drive a clutch with my right leg and still shift and keep it moving. Damn it, man. That's... But the way these kids are built now, they can't even get out the parking lot with two good legs. I worked all this year from March to May right now with a broken ankle for three months. Okay. No cast, no medication, nothing. This way we, this way we built. These guys would have never been able to do what I do. Exactly. I, I give you that. I, I give you applause for that, man, because, you know, like I said, we there's there's drivers out here that's 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 honestly not built for this industry, man. 
You they're know, not, but they're in it for the money. Somebody told somewhere in 19, I want to say around 2008, when the economy started rising, mm -hmm. around 2010, 2012, somebody who don't know shit about trucking figured if I get in the trucking game, I can make money. I don't need to know nothing about trucking. I just buy the truck and I just put drivers in them and I'll just be behind the scenes and make millions of dollars. But at the same time, you don't have no experience. So the fucking people you bring it on don't have no experience, but y'all learning off of take a little bit from Snyder, take a little bit from Swiss, take a little bit from JD Hunt. Take you, I'm looking at your program and all you did was cut and paste a lot of other people's shit. And then you bought a portal and you made it yours. Now you're trying to tell the world this is your shit. So what happened? 2012, everybody decides they want to start getting their CDLs. Welfare put out, unemployment put out. Everybody said the government will pay y'all to get your CDLs. Right, right. So when prisoners was getting released, they were allowed to get CDLs. They were being paid for. So it was open. It was an open door policy for anybody. Like my grandmother used to say, open the doors and the flies will come in. And that's what happened. The door opened, inexperience came in. It's not in your heart. It's not in your blood. I'm going to make a million dollars. I'm going to, oh man, truckers make, truckers make that loot. They make this, that third. But they never see what really goes on with that loot. Yeah, you got, you, they you, didn't you know do got guys they, out here. You you really do got guys out here that's, that's talking mad shit on you know on youtube on the on on facebook yeah. or, and the and the only and thing they, they and the only thing they talk feed. they they only talk the only thing they talk is yeah this this the hustle game i'm i'm out here making my bag and the then i'm about this to get the, the grind i'm about to get the grind in i'm grinding and i'm getting my bag and it's a this, hustle and all like the that new drug, man. this the new drug dealers what they are are drug dealers hiding money in the trucking industry, and I don't give a fuck if they hear it or not. I tell them to their fucking face. I know what you are, bitch. <laughs> You're not out here for the real deal. You're not out here for the long haul. You can't sit a thousand miles without pissing. You just out here trying to say you run a trucking company and you putting people to work. You putting prisoners, you know, coming out to prison to work. I I'm listening to these niggas lying. I'm listening to them. Mm-hmm. What you only doing, this is just hiding some other bullshit that's going on so you don't really put your shit out there. So you hide behind this industry, which you're destroying. This ain't even a family industry no more. This used to be a family industry. Let me tell you something, bro. I'm listening. Racism in this business was a damn near acceptable thing. There was oh, a time okay. in the 80s. It was a time in the 80s. If you left and you're from the East Coast. We were running down to Texas. There was a place called Gillies. It was a big bar. It was a big bar truck stop type deal. I was a young black kid. And I used to pull up in there. Let me tell you what. They, they cut my tires. They cut the hoses on my truck. They bust my windows. Racism was real. And you know what? Other white truckers would come out. Somebody had an airline. Somebody had coupling. We would be out there refixing my shit and make sure I was good to go. You can't get that now. These guys don't even know what it's like to pull over and help another driver get started. No, they don't. I got to give it to you on that one. They don't have that communication, bro. When I, when I, when I see a truck on the side of the road, I get on the radio. Hey, driver, you good? You, you need help? Back in my day when I really got into this, if a truck was broke down, bro, we didn't have cell phones. We was on the CB radio, and we would talk. And get phone calls made to your wife, your dispatcher, or your company, whoever. And that would go by the CB radio. That was other truckers, white, black, Chinese, green, blue. It didn't matter. We saw a brother broke down on the side of the road, whatever color he was. We made sure the message got to his company or to his wife. Okay. You can't get that shit now. No, you can't, man. No, you... See, when I tell y'all I live and breathe this shit to this day. I don't like to see people, whether it's a lady and her kids are on the side of the road, I'm going to pull the fuck over, walk back to the car. Hey, y'all okay? Because you don't know if her cell phone went dead and her battery's dead and she can't get nothing in her car. Nobody stopped to check on these people. We're truckers. We move America. We are America. I don't give a damn about your color. 
I got more goddamn white friends in the trucking industry than I do black. I can go to I can go to places that other people can't even dream about going. I listen to country music. I wear cowboy boots. I wear a cowboy hat because we have black cowboys. Mm-hmm. But we we you can't tell our young kids about that. They look at me like, damn, why are you dressed like that? Because we were really cowboys at one time, stupid. <laughs> yes, the, asphalt, the asphalt cowboys. That what's up. They man. don't know about that. So they don't know about the man, real deal. Man, listen, listen, listen. I, I I know you 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 got on Jay Rich hard about her uh about her uh automatic truck, bro. I mean No, she said she said she can do both. And I was just trying to clarify. Uh, when you say you could do both. Where's your preference? And when she said she loved the automatic, that took her out of my book of being a trucker. That put her as just a truck, uh, uh, a worker, <laughs> you know. And but then when we talk, mm-hmm. like I score people, I score people about how what they say. Certain things you could say, I can understand if you're telling me the truth or not. Okay. When she said she grew a passion for the industry. That's where me and her was able to talk. Once she told me she grew a passion, I said, okay, I could talk with her. Okay. And once she told the truth about what goes on in the trucking industry as a woman, I said to her, how many jumps have you had? See, and everybody else probably thought I was talking about needing cables and jumping the battery. No, she knew I was talking about getting fucked on the road. And she honestly admitted. And I said, see, I could talk with you now because you're keeping it 100 with me. Okay. And if there's anything she needs, she can call my company and get me or my son or anybody, and we're going to make sure she's good. She got that pass from us now. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, that's good she to hear. She got that pass. That is good to hear, man. Like I said, I mean, you know, as far as automatics, automatics out here, you know, they, you know, a lot of a lot of people is getting trained. The schools, is, the schools are training the uh, the the drivers now in automatics. So. I mean, there's not, it, it, it's not going to change. But you got to understand, they're weakening the industry, they, and they're also weakening the man. See, first of all, mm-hmm. you have a choice mm-hmm. what you drive when you go to these schools. And most of these dudes that are out here now are so fucking soft. They don't, they, uh, I'll take the automatic. They don't want to work. Driving a stick is too much work for them. They can't even drive a fucking car with a stick in it. They're not built for this. They're not built for, like I told a young lady yesterday, today's man is yesterday's woman. Yesterday's woman is today's man. Oh, okay. 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 These jokers ain't built for this shit, bro. These new dudes out here walking around, they got flip-flops. They getting out the truck in basketball shorts and flip-flops. And I'm sitting there looking at them. I say to myself, if these white boys decide to wild out right now, that brother right there is at a disadvantage. First of all, because he ain't got no footwear on. <laughs> they can, he, he ain't going to be able to grip. They, they, he ain't going to be able to grip the ground and get busy. <laughs> let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Go ahead. Go ahead. At, at my age, at fifty five, mm-hmm. if I step out my truck, the average joker that's a hater or a racist or just an individual that want to do some clown shit. He going to think twice before he jump on me versus these kids that's jumping out these trucks with their flip-flops on, their basketball shorts, headphones on, walking through the parking lot like oopie doopie doop. Mm-hmm. They don't realize there's still people out there that would lynch their little dumb asses in these backwoods. They don't realize they would still get fucked up by these dudes out here. There's haters out here. That is true. They want to talk about racism. You don't know racism until you sitting at a truck stop and, and a motherfucker walking in spitting your coffee. Oh, that's See, that's fight right I've there. They're not here. You ain't fighting nobody. I'm gonna tell you why you ain't fighting nobody. Because most of all, one one motherfucker sitting in the truck stop and he's surrounded by ten white ones. He ain't fighting. You know why? Because he was born scared. Mm. They say they gonna fight. Everybody tough until it's time to get busy. Everybody a killer until it's time to kill. Everybody crazy to crazy show up. See, I hear this shit all the time. But let me explain something to you, young man. Mm-hmm. Everybody know real jokers. When let me, I walk in a place and they think twice. Why? Because if you spit my fucking coffee, I'm going to throw that bitch in your face and all 10 of us, we're going to fight till one of us is dead. There we go. 
Okay, they understand this because they uh, they look at you. Let me explain something. Police look at you. These these these, these haters look at you. When police see you look a certain way, they don't just jump on you. They think twice about jumping on you. You know what they wait for? They wait for backup. And once the backup get there, then they get out the car and come talk to you. They don't come. They pull you over. They leave lights flashing, or they 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 keep you standing there because they already know by the way you came out, you about that life. Your boots is tied. Your shoes is tied. Your sneakers is tied. Your pants is up. You got a belt on. You ain't looking crazy. They like, oh shit, hold up. This one right here might act up. So this the cool Kente type. So t- this this that this that this that other dude. So what you're now your now your kids they're they're what fourth generation right because you're the third right uh right. the fourth your fourth generation kids you 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 training them on your on, on how it is with you you you're not did did they go to well. I, I'm gonna assume they had to go to school in order to get their CDLs now, right? No, no, no. My oh, boys learned. Okay. My, none of my boys went to school. Oh, okay. <laughs> they didn't go to school. One of my sons learned how to drive in the in the backyard without even me knowing. He he was fucking my truck in the backyard. Okay. And now he out there hauling ass. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, we that going to school shit is overrated, bro. This is something that was passed on to you either by a family member or a friend of that was able to bring you out on the road. When I grew up, man, a trucker would take the kids on the road around town. It was a summer job, right? Because we unloaded, we unloaded the trailers. Mm-hmm. Then in the eighties, they got smart and they made it a lumper service. Okay. See, they learned how to make money off of us, and then they made it a lumber service. And if you brought somebody in, now they made it so you had to have a certification. See, they 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 was taking the money away from us. I was making one hundred fifty dollars a trailer at 13, 14, 15 years old, mm-hmm. and I was doing two or three trailers a day. So it's a big difference. These this, this, what's going on now? My kids, my kids grew up knowing exactly how it is. Their grandfather was still alive up until last year. Sorry so they understand that. everything. Oh, that's life, man. Allah, take, Allah gives us life. He takes us when he's ready for us. And we understand that. You know, we don't, we, don't, we don't cry over stuff like that. We know that we were born to serve God and do the best we can as humans. And then when it's time for us to go, we got to answer to everything we ever did. Good, bad, or ugly. You're going to have to answer to that. So exactly. my father lived to be 80 years old. And it was his time to go back and answer. What did he, you know, that's how it is. Okay. There was no, there was no, there's no shed of tears around here. We don't do that. We accept exactly what God gave us, life and death. He gives it and he takes it when he's ready. Exactly. Exactly. I, I got to give you an applause for that one, man. All right. So, you, so... <laughs> So you straight up, you you straight up old school, man. I, I I'm I'm sitting here enjoying my 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 time with you, man, because you know you you spitting you spitting some some straight facts and some straight game, man. You know, and as for the people, as for the people that is coming out, man. I mean, what what advice what what advice would you give for 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 people? that are coming out that 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 just doing this just for the hustle what, what, what you got to say to them be careful be careful understand what you're getting ready to get into because this is a life that's changing the trucking industry is going to change even while i'm in it okay they're not going to experience losing a family losing a wife making a new family making new kids. They're not going to experience none of that shit because, like I said, once again, these guys are soft. They they, they, they don't know what giving $40 means. Okay? They don't know what the companionship and what depression is. You know, driving a truck from my era causes, it's is, is, is a depressing thing. You out there on that road, ain't nobody out there but you, that truck, that dark-ass road, and the God that you say you serve. And all your guilt will come out while you're driving. So I tell people all the time, when you're just starting out, make sure this is what you want to do. 
because there ain't nothing worse than yourself sitting in that passenger seat talking back to you. <laughs> That's what's up. See, a lot of people don't understand that. And I tell them, what's inside you will show on a late night. <laughs> it's like being in prison. It's like being in prison. When you go to prison, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of jokers come through prison, get in a cell. They talk to you the first two, three days. By seventh day, eighth day, they down. If they got the bunk above you, they up there crying. The fuck you crying for, bro? Oh, man, I can't believe this shit. Believe it. Believe it. The fuck you in here crying for? Don't, don't, don't wake them down to cry. Because whatever it is that you did, you're going to have to answer to that. Now yourself is starting to come out and look at you like you stupid motherfucker. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. And that's what happens on the road. When you're driving on that truck and yourself is sitting in that passenger seat, all your bad starts coming out. That's why I tell people, your depression going to kick in. They don't have it like we had it. We had to wait 100, 200, 300 miles to get to a phone to call home and argue with mama at the house. Babe, I called because, you know, when I left, I'm sorry. I fucked up. I, I shouldn't have did that. Now you got a cell phone. Y'all can argue all the way down the road, <laughs> all the way through a different country. It, it's easy now. You understand? So be careful when you come into this business because if it's not what you built for and it's not what you're ready to do, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your energy of all things. Why do it? You're playing with a gun that's loaded. And the only thing you can do is kill yourself. Mm. Why? Because you don't know which way to point it. That's what's up, man. If this ain't your love, if this ain't the love for, that you want and the desire that you want, you're only doing it for money, money is going to get you killed. Money going to get you lost. Money going to have you broke before you even get started. Because you're chasing money for the wrong reason. But if this is trucking is the love that you have, that money going to come. That money going to come. Every day. Let me tell you how I get paid. I don't worry about the dollar itself. I worry about the dollar that I get when I back into a door and I know they offloaded this shit that some kid's going to get. I haul groceries and I haul a lot of personal shit. Mm -hmm. So when I back in and they unload my trailer and once they sign my paperwork, I laugh. They go, what you laughing for? I said, because somebody about to be happy I brought this shit. That's what's up. That's that's my love. I get my I get my pay from knowing I got that shit there successfully. Ain't nobody died. I didn't have no accidents. I didn't cause no accident. And I backed in and everything was correct. All right, Sarge. I, I gotta go back to I, I gotta go back to the manual right quick because I I, I thought about I, I, I thought about this when you was telling me about the automatic and how the automatic, you know just basically turn people into pussies. I, I get you. The the, the <laughs> manual, the, but the ma the manual though, um, do you agree with this statement that there was less accidents with manual trucks than it was with automatics being that the driver, yeah. the driver had more to do. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't yes. he wasn't yes. idle. He wasn't idle. His his hand was always moving. His leg was always was always clutching. And you know what I'm saying? Yes. You you never, you know, you you like you said before, you you didn't get comfortable. You you agree you with get that statement? Because yes, because you know what? I say when you're driving and you get caught in that haze of an automatic and you comfortable and you wait, the truck down shifts on its own it up shifts on its own. You comfortable. You start nodding in a manual. You catch yourself. First thing you start doing is hitting that clutch and downshifting. Or you, you, you swing it back over, you downshift and shake that shit up. Like, Oh, Oh, what the hell just happened? But when it comes to getting out of a jackknife, coming on black ice, if you know how to downshift, Upshift, know when to accelerate, you ain't losing it. But these automatics, when they hit that black eye, it don't know the difference. It don't know that you need to downshift two gears instead of one. Okay. It don't know that you need to upshift to accelerate to pull the jackknife out. Okay. See, a lot of these guys will never know that. 
you getting ready to jackknife, you might have to accelerate. You might have to down one and snatch two to get up out of there. Mm, okay. But you can't do that because you're not experienced with it, and that truck don't know to do that. Just like these new Tesla trucks they're going to put out in Europe. This shit's not going to work in the real world. It's going to work in the, in, the, in the robot world, and it's going to work when it's in one lane. But what's it going to do if a deer jump in front of it? What's it gonna do when a What's it gonna do when a when a possum run across the road? Hmm. Okay. And there's no human in the truck. Well, they to override. Well, they gotta have they they they, to they gotta it. they got they gotta have a driver. He he probably might be in the back oh, sleep or some shit like that. No, 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 no. What they get ready to do in Europe? They just released everything yesterday. Mm-hmm. They're having driverless trucks on the interstate. And it's only when it pulls into the hub, that's when the driver takes over. But there will be no driver in it on the interstate. I'm looking at the people like, are y'all fucking kidding me? Okay, I got to check this out. Like, literally, no yeah, driver I, in the truck on the interstate. Hit, Not even. Hit my page. Hit, hit my page, and I'm going to send you the link to the, the interview. Okay. To the owner, who, who the, the, the guy from uh, Nico, Nico. That company, they just went. They went. They went public yesterday. Okay, and uh, he dropped the statement. They're going to go driverless until they get to the hub, and then the driver gets in. And I'm saying no, to myself, that's this not going to work, motherfucker, because it's not. Gonna... It's going to work in Europe because the highways are different in, in Europe. Oh, because okay. in Europe, they've been having they've been having uh, what they call electronic lanes for over thirty years now. Remember, they 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 way advanced in the United States. But because we manually work in the United States, that type of truck ain't going to work. They tried it in California um, two years ago, and they had a major accident because the truck didn't know how to read something coming from the side of it. And Tesla ended up crashing, and it caused a big traffic jam. So they scrapped that idea for a while. Same thing with the driving cars. The cars, even now, I got a car right now. If you push the uh, button, it keeps you in one lane. You drift a little bit, it pushes you back in the middle. You drift to the other side, it pushes you back. It plays ping pong with you while you're driving. And that's what the trucks are going to do. They're going to put it in this thing, and it's going to, you know, drive in this lane, and it can't switch lanes. But what happens when something darts in front of it? Deer don't give a fuck about darting in front of a truck. Possums and raccoons and shit, they don't care about that. They 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 don't even realize they're about to die. Some make it, some don't. All right, so I'm 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 checking this out right now, man. It, 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 and this is Sweden. S- yes, yeah, this is Europe. In Europe, they got it's a it's, yeah, it's, it's it look like a it don't even look like a don't even look like a truck, bro. It looks like a looks like a fucking pod. Like it looks like a well, it, gr- it looks school, like a it looks school. like a uh, a a, gar- a garbage truck. Over. It looks. They took old school cab overs and they made them. They. I'm gonna send you a link to the whole interview. Wait, like this this says summer and e ride e n ride. This looks like a garbage mm-hmm. truck, bro. It's gonna be more than that. They are gonna do all the vehicles like that. They trying to get rid of humans. That's why they weakening the man. If they can weaken the man and the man can't communicate with one another. What good do we need you? We don't need you no more. We have robots. What you're doing right now with your ELDs and your and your electronic phones and your and your uh, Siri and your Google, all you're doing is making information for them to do things without you. You know, I you know and my I, mom's t- <laughs> my mom said that you know because you know she got one of them little Google pods or something like that, and you know my son, mm-hmm. my son and his mom's got the 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 Alexa thing. You know, my, uh, right. she you know his mom's could you know go in her house and she got everything all automated through Alexa. Turn on the lights, Alexa. Turn down the heat, yeah, Alexa. So yeah, this and, and I, I was never a fan. They're, it, they're I'm, artificial, I'm not, they're artificially, they artificially taking the human from thinking for themselves, doing for themselves, and all they're gonna do is get rid of the humans, and they're gonna make it where the humans don't have a place in robot technology into artificial intelligence. They're gonna make people think that the artificial intelligence is smarter than the human. When actually, you got to remember. Everybody walking around with a cell phone has helped programming this shit. 
you're killing yourself. So you, so they, we, so you, you think we're gonna be like the real, the Will Smith movie? We're gonna be in a, in a I Robot type of shit in a, in a, in a, in a it's near future. Be worse. No, no, I'm gonna tell you the, the future y'all missed that we're gonna be in is Demolition Man. Oh, God damn it, man! Go back. Don't say no. Don't say no. I, 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 I can't fuck with Taco Bell, bro. <laughs> well, yeah. And if you think they're lying, if you think they're lying, look around you. Taco Bell is every fucking where. They put a Taco Bell up before they put anything up right now. Mm -hmm. Just Taco Bell's being <laughs> drive through Taco Bell's. They got walk up. Look at Taco Bell. That movie told y'all exactly where we're going. And that where they had the people living over top, if you look, when they went in the underground, that wasn't the gutter. That was a whole entire city, city yep. that they built over top of a city. They're going to take your ghettos, what they call ghettos and suburbs, and they're going to turn them into, they're going to build cities over top. That's why you have all those ramps right now. California, Atlanta, Chicago, Jersey, they got them skyways, them big-ass ramps that go around and bypass shit. Mm -hmm. They did that for a reason, because they want to be able to connect them and build a whole nother city above these places. Okay, that's what's up. People ain't paying attention to what's going on. They're not. They just out here. People out here, they don't care. Man, man, I don't give a fuck what's going on, man. That shit don't bother me. Yeah, it don't bother you now until you're unemployed and you can't feed your family. Exactly. Exactly, and they now that's why the fit, the, mm. the robbery, the killing is all going to be down there. No one's going to give a fuck. The people that live above, if you go back to the movie, remember they was living above. And when they went, when Sylvester Stallone went underneath to go find Wesley Snipes, mm -hmm. he ran to everybody he knew already. That was a whole city. That wasn't no sewer. That was a city. Mm. Well, we're gonna have to. I'm I'm gonna have to go back. Actually, I I like Demolition Man. That's one of my favorite movies, by the way. But, Go back uh, and watch it. Now watch it for the education part of it. You say watch it. Don't don't watch it for the action part. Watch it for the education part. No, watch it. Wait, watch it for the education. Watch it and take notes. And when you take notes, you're gonna find at least five things in that movie that's taking place right now. Okay. That's... Look at the cars that they're showing. Look at the cars that they're showing. You're gonna see those same cars that they're putting out right now. Okay, that's what's now. Up. Mind you, that movie's what damn near thirty, 30 years, years old. That movie's old, yeah. probably damn near thirty years yeah, old. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it was. Uh, I remember going to the theater when I was young, uh, watching that movie. So yeah, that was my. So you were around my age. Yeah, yeah. I'm fifty one. I'll be fifty one this year. Okay, so, I'm fifty five. Yeah, okay, so. that's what's up. Great, you know, great. we gotta gotta keep it. We gotta gotta keep it going, man. <laughs> All right, so they want so, people. They want people like you and I out of the. They want you and I away from the new generation because we can empower them and we can keep them united. Okay, that's what's because we're able to we're able to read and we're able to work as a group. We're able to move as a group and not as one. These young kids is trying to move as one. And look at how they rioting. They stand in front of the police throwing shit. We would have never did nope. that. We'd have waited till them bitches got close enough to us, and we would have flanked them. <laughs> what do you? What do you? What, how? How do you feel? How? How do you feel about that? I mean, this. I mean, this situation that went on up in up in Minnesota had a ripple effect throughout the entire world. I, I said, I, I, agree. I said, I agree with it. I well, me, I agree with it. Uh, me. You know, I said I wasn't going to talk about it no more. I mean, because it became political, and a lot of people that gives their own—I mean, gives their opinion on it—you know, it probably might offend. If I say something on it, I will probably offend somebody. So, but go ahead, go ahead. What's your what's your thoughts on it? My thoughts on it is this: I I feel if we stick together as we're supposed to, we're supposed to be tribes. You never saw tribe members go out and do shit by themselves. They sent the tribe out. When they went and did shit, they went out as a group. They didn't go out as one person. They sent the scout out to get information. When the scout came back with the information, the whole tribe moved. So my thing is, if these cops want to act a fool, we got to police us. We got to police us first. Now, if you see uh, shit going wrong with a police and there's four or five of them, and they're doing some dirty shit to one of us, if they see 12 of us to 15 to 30 of us standing there, 
and we standing there close enough to be, all right, bro, that's enough. Do you actually think they're going to keep kneeling on somebody? See, there were kids videotaping that. There was no grown men around. I, 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 hold on. I, 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 saw, I said that. I, I said that, bro. I, I, I was the one, and a lot of people came back at me, said, no. Nah. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't have did that because you know we would have went to jail and yada yada yada. I said so if what? somebody, if somebody would have sacrificed themselves, that dude would have been alive today. Now, of and course, you would have. We'd all be at jail. You would. We all gonna be in jail and say, "Yo, you good, fam?" Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And you could say, okay. and and yeah. like I said before, I I said, I said, do it. Get a lawyer. That lawyer would have made you out to be a fucking hero. Just like that. That's right. That's his job. He would have made That's you out job. to be a hero. Now, see, those kids were kids. The girl, the girl was only uh, seventeen years okay, old. I thought she was. That was filming. I thought she was. The 15. boy, no, fifteen to seventeen, somewhere in that age group. She was still a kid. Mm -hmm. The boy that was talking to the cop that was saying like, "Yo, y'all doing this to him? Y'all doing?" He was only nineteen. Yeah, the bro guy. He he, he kind of hurt me there yeah, for a little he, bit, but he. But you got to realize he not built for that. Now, me personally, I can say what we could have did, what we should have did, but we wasn't there. We could have, should have, would have, right? Right. But I know me. I've been in altercations with the police behind them doing shit to me, and I've been in altercations with them doing shit to people. That I don't even know. I'm getting close. They, they, yo, back up, back up. And they pull their gun out on me. I'm like, what you going to do, shoot me? But I guess what? At the same time, the person that they was trying to fuck with got an opportunity to be handcuffed correctly. They might have been forced in the car. They might have been done something. But at that particular time, they not cops ain't going to do shit when they see real warriors standing there watching. You know what? That goes back to uh that goes back to that fucking movie Panther, dude, because that one dude was exactly. that one dude was getting his butt it, 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 it was the one scene where the where the cop was beating that dude in the alley and 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 the dudes congregated. And as soon as they congregated, that motherfucking cop or the cops stopped beating that man up. And they they sure. they they because they handcuffed they, they handcuffed because him they know, properly because they know shit about to get real. Cops ain't stupid, bro. White, black, Chinese—I don't give a fuck what they are. They not stupid. They only take advantage of those that are weak and solo. Think about it: when a lion jumps on a gazelle or. Uh, a, a stray animal, they go for the smallest one. You never see them jump on the big bull first. You ain't never seen it. Only time they jump on the big bull when there's about five or six of them. You ain't never seen a lion jump on a fucking male elephant and take him down. They Lions are what the most feared in the jungle, but they don't even live in the jungle because if they get in the jungle, there's animals in the jungle that'll whoop that lion's ass and tell him to go back and get his fucking friend. <laughs> See, they lie about how they say the lion is the king of the jungle. The lion don't even live in the jungle. The lion lives in the prairie in the flatlands. You know what lives in the jungle? Gorillas, elephants, wild boar. This, <laughs> I put it like this. I, I hate to use the saying, but I say it because it's true. The niggas that's about that life live in the jungle. Mm. You live in the projects, you can go to any projects around the world. But if you grew up in the house, you can't go in the projects. You can go visit your family, but you ain't going up in the projects chilling. That ain't what you do, because you can't do it, because them niggas in the projects looking at you like, who the fuck is this? You don't see the police running up in the projects beating on nobody. Have you ever heard of it? Not to my knowledge, not where where I'm from. I I haven't seen or heard anything like that. You ain't gonna see it because you ain't gonna see it because you know the project's gonna wild out. They may beef with each other, but let the police run up there talking about they grabbing somebody. They not standing for that. That's their community, and that's where we go wrong as people. We don't protect our community. We don't police each other no more. 
there was a time you couldn't knock nobody up, bro, without somebody having information on who's getting locked up and where they taking them. And when they got to the precinct, they was at the precinct waiting to make sure he was still good and he was still in good shape when he got there. Malcolm X. They don't do that no more. Oh, you heard such and such got locked up. Word. I heard the cops whooped that ass. And y'all ain't go check on him? Nobody went to check on him? What kind of what kind of people are y'all? I don't understand these new people, bro. I really don't. I don't get it. Mm. I got a group of friends that I grew up with, and we friends to this day. You best believe if they call me and say we got a problem, we all get together. And we go sit down and we figure out how we're going to eliminate this problem. And then we all go back to our regular lives. That's what's up, man. But the person they had the problem, the person they had the problem with, don't even know how it happened to them. But they know not to do that shit no more. <laughs> That's what's up, bro. Well, hey, man. this is trucking. Hey, man. this is trucking. This is this tr trucking is a brotherhood. Trucking is a brotherhood, whether you white, black, male, or female. Females is more now in the business than they was, and I'm glad because now we ain't got to worry about looking for pussy. <laughs> <laughs> You <laughs> say we don't have to worry about looking for the pussy because they all right here for it. <laughs> hey, listen, we ain't got to worry about fucking some old cracked out white chick now. <laughs> we got enough black sisters out there we can holler at right now. <laughs> oh man, well, that's and I don't mean and I don't mean that with no disrespect. I mean that just out of love. You say you say no shots fired on that one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> nah. Oh I'm man! Tired of giving them silly looking white bitches my money. Sarge, man, I, I appreciate you took the time to come on and uh, chop it up with me, man. This this was a beautiful conversation. You know, a lot of things I learned hey, from you today, man. man. I appreciate it, it you just, it, it, it was it was good that we that we got together and we banged out, man. I appreciate you reaching out to me. I, I didn't even know you was doing a show. I'm, I'm like, is this a show or something? Yeah, man. Yeah, that's why I said we're gonna just we we gonna just jump right into it because, like I said, we, you know, you when when you was on Jay Rich Live, I was like, man, yeah, I, I gotta get I gotta get this dude on, man, because he, I, you know, I was back, you know, I was back and forth in you know in the live feed while y'all two was talking. So, but I see, okay. uh, I see Jay Rich. You know, she, um. I mean, it's a lot of people that uh, turn the music it's a lot of people that that fuck with her, and a and a lot of people that don't. You know what I'm saying? You know she, um, you know she, uh, you know she 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 kind of kind of larger herself through YouTube, Instagram. They well at one at one that's point today's people. At, at at one point she she got hijacked you know on YouTube but she started another channel but um but yeah she you know she she came in and you know spit her ups and downs and all like that and now I think she uh, came back and showed that she got a couple of trucks now that she's trying to do it at, you know trying to try to go to on her operator route again and I'm you know I wish her much success on that. Uh, me too. You know, too. I I wish her much success on that. Um, but you know, that's the way. What they call, what the kids call, that's the wave. Everybody, you know, they YouTube mm -hmm. and Instagram and Facebook. I don't. I'm just getting on this bullshit about seven months ago. Mom, I think I I think I started my shit like in uh, December. Yeah, my mom's my mom's don't even fuck with social media at all. She she don't. Me, you know, I you know the only reason why I got Facebook is just to advertise advertise my uh my podcast and shit but you know plus my sister okay. she's on on facebook she's big on facebook but other than that like instagram i fuck with instagram the most but you know i just do you know promotions of of my podcast pretty much but like unlike everybody you send me the information so i can follow you yeah 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 Un unlike everybody else you know, that comes on there and say, yo, this is what I'm eating today or this is where I'm taking the shit at or or this is where yeah. th this this is what I'm doing this. And this and here I'm on vacation and all like that. And then you got somebody nah. you got somebody in the comments like, so uh, you on vacation. I'm hoping that you have a good time. Uh, where do you live at again? Yeah. In the meantime, where, where do you live at? In the meantime, they robbing your fucking yeah. house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> where, where, where do you live at again? Oh, oh, you you got uh -huh. one of those ring door ring cameras too, but you yeah. already said mm -hmm. you in California, so yeah, I'll make sure I put on a 
I'll make sure I'll put on a hood, a mask, mm-hmm. break into your shit. We're gonna get through all that. Break into we your gonna get through right, all that. break into your shit, and then yeah. And then you're gonna come back home and make another video. <gasps> Somebody broke into my shit. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Absolutely right, bro. Absolutely right. But like I said, exactly. man, send me your information and I'm gonna follow you. Uh, and I definitely I'm gonna tell my son. Tell my son. Yeah, about no you. doubt, man. No doubt, man. I would definitely do that. I'll, uh, let me see. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I got your inf- uh, got your phone right here. But uh, yeah, man. Like I said, I appreciate again. I appreciate you coming on, man. And like I said, you know, me and you, you know, we're from, you know, we're from the same era. You know, you're three years older than me. Yes, sir. But uh, yes, sir. but yeah, we, me and you both, we, you know, we don't do this Instagram, Facebook. You know, shit coming on there, let everybody know what the fuck, you know, let everybody know, you know, too much. It's like I always said, I I keep a lot of shit close to the vets. You know what I'm saying? That's right. You know, I I did. I I promoted two companies while I was out here, but I don't promote that shit no more. You know what I'm saying? Everybody keep asking me like, yo, who you drive for a lockout? Like, "Mm, why? (laughs) Why? Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it for the uh, for the for the re, uh, the 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 ref the for the money no more. For the what is it? Re- yeah. Well, on my cha- on my channel on my on my uh, Instagram, basically, I promote get your CDL mm-hmm. as a positive and a negative. I want people to see the good in it, and I want people to see the bad in it. But I want them to understand. I can make fun of it. At the same time, I'm teaching you not to do this. Shit. Where where is your what, what's your what's your Instagram, bro? Oh, the DSX Trucking. Uh, shit. I can't even. Damn, my thing just went back out. Uh, you said it's DSX Trucking. Yeah. All right. Drill Sergeant. Excel. All right. Everybody yep. is 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 D S D as in doll S as in Sam X as in X Ray Trucking. Make sure you guys go follow this young man because he he got some got some experience if you and 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 got that fire. I had to give it to him. I had to give it to him, Bruh, Sergeant. Thanks for coming on, man. I really do appreciate it. Hey, appreciate you. Man. No doubt. Keep doing what you're doing. Man. I will. I will. That's strong. All right. So if you guys want to come on and All talk right. to me, if you guys want to come on and talk to me, holler at me. Get at me at Lockout Me in Gmail. Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com or you can go to the Instagram and hit me up over there. Uh, hit me up over there. Uh, Lockout Men. Just hit me up. Or you can call me 216-600-2090. I take that call part back. Make sure you text me because if I'm driving, I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> text me and then I'll get back at you. You know what I'm saying? I get back at you. All right, I am your humble host, Locked Out Men. If you like, if you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that subscribe button for more content like this. Me, Locked Out Men, my man Sarge. That's it. We're gone. That's it. We're out of here. Peace.